Okay, so here we're going to take a look at finding the focal length of a concave mirror. So that's where all the light comes together. So to start this off, we're going to need to set it up that we are focusing on a faraway object. The intent of this is to find an approximation for the focal length before we do the experiment. Why do we do this? Well, very simply, we want to ensure the object is outside the focal point. If it's inside the focal point, it'll do a virtual image which won't form on a screen. Secondly, it's really good to have an idea of what the answer should be before you crack into an experiment. What you need here is an object to focus on in the distance. You can see there I'm using a building and there's a crane construction going on. You need a screen to focus onto, so just a piece of paper there hanging. Uh, free hanging and then finally you need a concave mirror. So our intent is to use the to reflect the image outside onto the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this mirror until I get a sharp focused image of outside and there if you can see if I just in and out I can get an image of outside there's the building upside down with the crane. Um, adjust it till you get a nice as sharp as you can kind of get it. Uh, it helps if you make the back of the room behind you darkened. And then when you've done that, your intent is to measure the distance from the mirror to the screen. So this is your image distance, for, so from the mirror to the screen. Once you've measured that, you can use that as the approximate focal length for this concave mirror. Okay, so briefly on why does measuring the image distance give you the focal length. So if we take an object far away, right, I'm going to do a tree here. I'm reflecting it off my concave mirror onto a screen. Now, the image should be upside down because it's a real image. And when you form it at this distance, it's going to always be upside down, where this is my V and my U. So why is the measuring the distance V going to give us an approximate focal length? Well, if we're using this equation, 1 over f equals 1 over u plus 1 over v, right? What we're saying here is that the object distance, 1 over u, is really big. Now, if you grab your calculator and if you try plug in a really big number underneath here, so for example, if I say 1 divided by 100, right? So 1 over 100, let's say it's 100 meters, it's 0 0.01. If I go even further away, which it was, it was very far away, we get an even tinier number, which is like 0 0.00001, right? So this number here ends up being basically negligible, as in it's really, really tiny. So what we can say is this approximates, approximates to zero. So this basically becomes zero. So therefore, we end up getting that one over F is approximately one over V. And if you just take it, they're both, if you just flip them both, the focal length is approximately the image distance. That's why we do it, okay? How do we do it? We do focus on a faraway object. Why do we do it? So that we can basically say that this is zero. Anyway, let's do the actual experiment. So for our setup for this experiment, we're going to need a light box or a source or an object. We're going to need a concave mirror and we're going to need a screen. So for the setup of the experiment, what you need is a light source, a concave mirror, some sort of measuring device, and a screen. So what we're intending to do is get an image on the screen. So I've placed some distance away, and now I'm trying to get a sharp, focused image. And you'll notice you have to adjust it till you get a nice image of what we see over there. So over here I've got the letter F, it's hard to see with the lights on, but letter F, and over here I'm getting an upside down F. Now, once we've got the position, we're gonna measure the distance between the screen and the mirror. That is our image distance. So we measure it using a ruler or using uh, this guy here, measuring tape. And then the other distance we're gonna measure is from the mirror to the light source, and that's our object distance. So we measure our object distance and we measure our image distance. We then move the object closer, further away, and we repeat. So we get our screen and we adjust it until we get a clear, sharp, focused image. And that's gonna be a bit subjective. So you can see there, there's a certain sweet spot where it looks pretty good. 
and then using your partner, buddy, friend, you can then measure the distance again, image distance from the screen to the mirror, object distance from the mirror to the light source. Re rinse and repeat, do that several times, and then make a graph. And just a thing before we talk, go through some experiments, make sure that uh, if they ask about precautions and error, you want to say it's a sharp, focused image uh, that you always measure to the center or the back of the mirror, okay? Um, and that finally you try to avoid parallax error when measuring distances. So there are two ways you can generally tackle these questions. Uh, you can either tackle them via calculation or via graph. So taking a look here at the 2023 uh, uh, Question two on the higher level paper. You can see here they've given three uh, different va uh, three different values of u and three different values for v. Now they've given it in centimeters. You can actually do the calculations in centimeters, but you know what? Let's get into good habits. Change to meters. Just taking a look. Parts one and two we've already talked about. Part three is a label diagram. Part four is describe how the student determined and measured v. That's talking through the experiment. And part five is use all of the data to calculate f. Okay, now you can use a graph or you can use calculation. I'm going to do this example by calculation. So here we have the data from the question. We have our object distance is u and our image distance is v. Uh, they're in centimeters. And since they're all in centimeters, I can just do these calculations in centimeters. So I'm not going to bother changing it. Although if you did change it to meters, it would not be wrong either. So we're going to be utilizing this equation three times. So this is just a case of plug it in and repeat it three times. So I'm gonna do that slightly sped up. Now that I have them plugged in, the important thing here is not to panic about the maths. You can just plug this straight into your calculator. So I'll just demo it for the first one. So we're just doing the stuff on the right. So I say one over 20 plus one over 66.3. And I end up getting a big long decimal, right? Now, what's easier for you is to hit the STD button and it'll give you as a fraction. So I'm gonna write this one over F equals 863 over 13260. But we're not looking for one over F, we're looking for F. So what I'm gonna do with this value is I'm gonna flip the fraction on the left and flip the fraction on the right. F over one is just F and this becomes 13260 over 863. So I, you can, just invert it in your calculator, or you can just put it back in again, 863, and I get 15.365. So I will take it to three decimal places. Um, if you're doing it in meters, I would take five or six significant figures just to improve the accuracy. All you're going to do is rinse and repeat for the next two, so I'll do that kind of sped up. Okay, now that I have my three values, the last thing I wanna do is to, they said to use all the data. So all I'm gonna do is find an average of these three. So I'll call this a F1, F2, and F3. To find the average of three numbers, you just add them together and divide by three. So I get my focal length here to be 15.365. Don't forget your units. So what was I doing the question in? I was doing it in centimeters. So I make sure to say 15.365 centimeters. If you converted it to meters at the start, you would have got 0 0.15, probably 154. One decimal place here is fine because he gave it as one decimal place in the question, um, but just try to keep it. Look, he's not going to punish you for more accuracy. And that's how you do a calc using it via calculation method. The next method that we're going to look at is called, I'll call it the graphing method. And uh, in, effectively in this one, we're going to find our 1 over u and our 1 over v values, make a table. I definitely convert it to meters in here, and I would it then going to find where it intercepts the x and y axes. So let's have a look at uh, the following year to see it in more detail. So here we have uh, 2007, question three, higher level. And you can see, again, he's asked the question, how do you get the approximate value for the focal length? What's the advantage of it? And then he asked for a, a, a diagram with a description of how he found the position image. Nice, nice marks there for you. The last bit he asked by drawing a pseudo graph based on reported data. So let's jump in and do that now. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is write this all in meters. So you don't have to do this step, but I'm just gonna do it just so you can see it if you're not sure how to do it. So in the order to convert centimeters to meters, just divide each of the values by 100. And I'll do it now, but I'll speed it up slightly. Okay, once we have our values written in meters, the next thing we can do is uh, write this as uh, one over u and one over v. So if it's one over u, then the value of the unit would be m minus one. And one over v 
and again m minus one and i'm going to make six columns here again for myself steve should i draw a proper table sure if you if it brings you joy how do i get one over you one over point one five and i get 6.6666 so on and so forth now the easier thing to do here is to leave it as this decimal but only put in about two significant figures so 6.67 okay how do i do the next one one over 0.2 five and so on and so forth so go through and fill out the two tables there i now have all my data put into the table so the next part i need to decide is what am I going to put for my x and y axes? Now, for this particular uh, setup, it doesn't actually matter. So the way I showed it in the graph earlier was I put one over u on the y axis and one over x on the x axis, or one over v, sorry, on the x axis. But really, it doesn't matter in this particular one. What we're trying to do is we're going to plot these points, and then we're going to end up getting something that looks like that with a couple of dots, and we're going to draw a line of best fit. And what we're looking for is where it cuts these axes, because that'll tell us the value of 1 over f. So we're going to get two values of 1 over f and then find the average. Sometimes it could be the same, depending on how you draw your picture. Now, what you need to do when you're first looking at your graph is decide, okay, where am I going to draw this? Now, I'll have to be shifting this around, because I'm obviously doing it A4, but that's how you'd be doing it as well. So what I'd look at is, my if I'm going to put this as my y-axis, then I need to go as high as 7, because it goes up to 6. And we always start at zero. This also needs to go at least seven. Now in this particular experiment, because I've seen it done a few times, I will always suggest to students to even go as far as eight, even a little bit more. Okay. Um, the reason for that just being that it's gonna, you're gonna have to, if, the, if you put this as your highest point, then you won't have enough room left to go further. So always give yourself a little bit more. So I'm gonna go eight in both axes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use eight large boxes along the bottom and then eight large boxes going this way. What I recommend is getting yourself a large plastic ruler, but I'm just gonna use a short one today. Large one's gonna be more accurate for you and it'd be a lot easier to draw your line of best fit. So the first thing I've done is just scale my axes. So I've got eight on my Y axis going from zero, always going from zero in physics. We're never gonna skip, okay? And I've got eight going in my X axis. I'm gonna label my X axis one over V and I'm gonna label my Y axis one over U. Now, I know this is frustrating because my camera constantly moves between the two, but this is realistically how a student would be seeing it as well. Now, my job is to plot uh, these different points. So I'm gonna to go to 1.65 in the V and, uh, sorry, in the X axis and 6.67 in the Y axis. Now, if you notice, there's only 10 boxes. So I can't get to 6.67, I can actually really only get to 6.7 but you can plot it at 6.7 or just slightly below it is fine, but you can only go to the level of accuracy of what you have. So I'm gonna to go to 1.65, like halfway through box six. So on the bottom, I go to one, and then I count each of these boxes is worth uh, 0.1, because there's 10. So six, five, so halfway here, 1.65, and go all the way up to my coordinate, 6.7. So you can use a ruler to help you, 1.65, and then go up to here, 6.7, and sure enough, there's my coordinate there. Make a nice clear dot on the page for the examiner, okay, or, uh, and recommend it, do it in pencil, I'm just doing a pen here to make it clear, but definitely do it in pencil. So a nice clear dot, and you're going to plot the rest of the points. I'm going to do that now, and hopefully speed that up for you. And what you should get is a straight line graph that looks something like that. So you can see that it's going to go and extend out the page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my ruler and do a line of best fit. Now, I'm turning the page sideways just to show this, right? A line of best fit, okay? You, firstly, you can see my ruler is too short. It's much better with a big ruler, a clear plastic ruler. But let's have a look. I'm trying to get as many lines equal side of uh, of the lot of where they kind of fit. So if I say if I drew a line there, we can see that I've got one point on the right, if we take the right of the ruler, the left of the ruler, another point on the right, and kind of two points here. It's not a bad line of best fit. I might just tweak it si slightly. One point over here, kind of two points very close. Uh, another point here, I'd say there is not bad. So let me just draw a little line to show you what I mean. 
Now, this is why we're also going to say do it in pencil. Big deal, right? I'm going to continue this on. Again, should be done in pencil. Okay, but continuing on, you can see it's not a great line of best fit. This point here is quite far away. These two points are quite close. These two are quite close. But it looks like on the left-hand side or the top-hand side here, I should have probably shifted it a bit more, maybe this way. Now, look, if you did it in pencil, you'd rub it out and do a nicer one, okay? But what I'm going to look at, I'm just going to continue with these answers anyway, just for the argument of it. I'm looking at where it intercepts the axes. So here it intercepts at 8.25. And down here, on my x-axis, I have to extend it a bit, it intercepts there, it looks like it intercepts to me at 8.55, okay? So you're going to find those two points, and then you're going to use that to calculate the value of the focal length. So I'll do that calculation on a separate piece of paper, just to make it a bit neater. So, I got two values for 1 over f. I got 1 over f equals 8.25, and I also got 1 over f equals 8.55. So what I'm going to do is rearrange this. Now, if you can imagine, this is 8.25 over 1 and 8.55 over 1. So the easiest way is just to flip these. This becomes f, and this becomes 1 over 8.25. This becomes f, and this becomes 1 over 8.55. And then I plug them in my calculator. So I get this to be f is 0 0.121212. I'll put a few decimal places. Do it again for the other one, 8.55. f is 0 0.116959. More, more accuracy is never a bad thing. I have two different values of f. I'm going to find an average. So here you can see I got an answer of 0 0.1190855. So we'll take it even three significant figures. So my answer is 0 0.119, and be careful of the units, meters, because I've done meters on my axes. Or if you want to translate, 11.9 centimeters for focal length. And that looks like a fairly decent answer between the two. Um, how do I prove the accuracy of this? Well, I make sure to use a long, clear plastic ruler and make sure to get a better line of best fit, so maybe just angle it down slightly more. I think this probably should have gone through about 8.3 or 8.4, and this side probably should have gone through 8.4 as well, okay? But that's using the graphing method there for finding the focal length of a concave mirror.